Only one-third of all internationally educated nurses who apply for licensure to work in Canada are successful. Yet improvements to the assessment, support, education, and licensing process of internationally educated nurses has been estimated to double their success rate. Nurses need to meet several requirements as they vary by province and professional designation. In some provinces, there may also be additional requirements such as proof of Canadian work experience and the completion of a jurisprudence exam. One of the main barriers internationally educated nurses face is the assessment of their foreign nursing credentials. In Ontario, during the 2012 full calendar year, 5,500 new applicants were received from internationally educated nurses, not including the U.S. Of these applications, only 32% had completed their licensure within one year. In contrast, during the same period of the 10,000 Ontario-trained nursing applications, 74% had resulted in full licensure within one year. During the assessment of foreign nursing credentials, nursing regulatory bodies must evaluate whether education and training obtained abroad are equivalent to Canadian nursing programs in order to ensure patient safety, quality of healthcare services, and uphold nursing standards. Nursing bridging programs are designed to address gaps and differences in education and competencies so internationally educated nurses may become registered to practice in Canada. These programs allow internationally educated nurses to gain required training for their licensure process without duplicating their entire nursing education. When foreign nursing credentials are not accepted by regulators, applicants must complete a one-time fee-based competency examination which includes a written and a clinical component, the Objective Structured Clinical Examinations, or OSCE. Internationally educated nurses and practitioners from educational institutions have attested to its high difficulty level and low pass rate. I appreciate that it's another level of evaluating the competencies of a practicing RN, BSCN graduate of today, um, but uh, um, it certainly, I think, has uh, become a challenge for a lot of uh, IENs in uh, showing that they uh, can shine as nurses here in Canada. Applicants who are unsuccessful in the competency examination must complete additional educational training to bridge the competency gap. We had to wait for four to eight weeks in order to get the OSCE results. Once we, I got my OSCE results, they will send back to the CNO. And again, I had to get a letter from CNO stating that I cleared my OSCE. Uh, if I fail to do so, uh, um, now the board has decided any student failed in OSCE, they have to undergo for another two-year program in York University, full-time. Certainly there are challenges for internationally educated nurses in having their foreign credentials recognised by the nursing regulatory agencies in Canada. There are some innovations that have been developed. For example, the Canadian Nursing Association has been looking at uh, offshore examination centres that would streamline the process for internationally educated nurses. And there is also the National Nursing Assessment Service, which is a, a kind of one-stop shop for nurses to submit their information in order to have their regulatory process initiated in different prov provinces across uh, Canada. Um, in, in addition to that, in Ontario we have the Office of the Fairness Commissioner and their mandate is to maintain that all professional regulators in their process of assessment maintain impartiality, fairness, transparency and objectivity. The Office of the Fairness Commissioner is um, an agency of the provincial government. It works um, arm's length from the government. And its purpose really is to ensure that individuals who are applying for licensure are treated fairly in the licensing process. There should be greater support, both from within the College of Nurses of Ontario to help those people through the transition, as well as from um, bridging programs and from governments and other sources. Our office monitors what they're doing, how they're doing it. We make recommendations to them to improve their practices. 
Um, they have acknowledged that they need to improve in this area and they're taking some steps to do that. So certainly researchers and practitioners have identified the challenges that internationally educated nurses do find when they are seeking their credential recognition as uh, registered nurses. In some cases when they're unable to achieve that credential recognition they may apply to become registered practical nurses which is a lesser regulated health professional. In other cases there is a trend towards entering the health system as a personal support worker. These are non-regulated opportunities in the health field and while they do allow for candidates to be in the health sector, there is some concern about whether this is an indication of uh, general de-skilling and potentially a squandering of the investments that have been made in that individual. I think um, it probably relates to the fact that sometimes it can be difficult to get themselves registered um, for whatever reason, perhaps they've been out of, out of work and not doing that job for, for many years, so it becomes more difficult for them and they do have to um, earn a living. So they choose the non-regulated um, health professional like the personal support worker program. Um, and once they get involved in that, they can uh, take the program and get themselves out wor working very quickly um, and, and work full time or, or part time and then further their education to become a registered health professional. The process for internationally educated nurses to obtain licensure is neither an isolated or insignificant challenge, but these challenges are not solely attributed to the licensing process. The immigration pathways from which nurses enter Canada also add complexity to internationally educated nurse licensure process, workforce integration, and the overall nursing labour market planning. We know that a lot of IENs come here through the Live-In Caregiver Program or other programs that are there to provide care for our elderly and for our children. Um, and that program is only increasing. It's, it's very disconcerting to know that they're coming as, as, as individuals who are going to provide services that are well below their, their skill level uh, and they will become de-skilled. And because the window is closing, on currency of practice and how long they have to actually apply to become registered as a professional, that's disconcerting. So our interest in the internationalization of nursing labour markets is an area for research and policy analysis to, to focus on going forward. We've certainly seen evidence of uh, flexibilization in the nursing sector and this is evidenced by the increasing use of part-time and contract positions and internationally educated nurses are integrated into that changing labour market. We're also witnessing an increase in international mobility of health professionals. So in this changing system, we do need to pay attention to the rights of internationally educated nurses because protecting the rights of that sector really helps us to maintain the integrity of the healthcare sector as a whole. Because we've had successive groups of um, internationally trained nurses as part of our staff, we actually have managers and nursing practice leaders who are in that group of people. But that means when you're integrating new staff, there are actually role models who understand that transition, who can coach those who are having perhaps more difficulty they might get some additional support. Internationally trained nurses remain determined to work in Canada and will continue to provide an important part of Canada's healthcare system. Being in Canada is my dream and being as a nurse is my passion.